Today, a new laptop that impressed me, touchscreen, OLED, 99% Adobe RGB, a powerhouse that becomes my recommended machine for photo and video editors that need power on the road. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. So why am I talking about a new laptop? You know, I've been so happy with my Dell XPS 15, and I still am. But the big reason is that they quit making this computer, and what they replaced it with, to my mind, has significant limitations. They're kind of going in the wrong direction. A lot of the same reasons that I don't love using the Apple uh, laptops. I love my Mac Studio back there, but with laptops, I'm really enjoying Windows and touch screens and OLED displays, and and the ability to open up the machine and add hard drives and RAM whenever I want to keep the machine upgraded. Um, Asus has this magnificent new uh, laptop, the ProArt Studio Book 16. We'll talk about that just, just in a second. Um, I, 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 I'm not upgrading to this yet, but if I, something went wrong with my previous generation Dell XPS 15, this is the machine I would buy, all right? The previous XPS 15 has two hard drive connectors on the motherboard. You can open this up and stick in a second M.2 NVMe fast SSD drive, two gigabytes per second plus. I've done that, so I have two hard drives in this, one system drive at two terabytes, one data drive at four terabytes. You can go in and adjust the RAM. I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM in this. It has a wonderful, nice feeling keyboard. Nothing like you know the butterfly keyboards that Apple uh, took the wrong step toward. Very upgradable, very fast, i9 processor, 64 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA 3070 graphic card. A great, great machine that I still use and recommend, but the new version that they're releasing only comes in an XPS 14 and 16. So instead of 15 and 17, they're doing actually, I think, just a 16. There's a 13 inch and then a 16 inch. So they're moving from a small, medium, large to just small and large. And they've put in a keyboard that's a lot more like the Apple's butterfly keyboard of old. It doesn't feel very tactile or nice. They've removed one of the hard drive connectors on the motherboard. They've soldered the RAM in. They've gotten rid of the SD card slot and put a micro SD card slot just a whole bunch of things that don't make me particularly happy. Um, so the, the new Dell XPS 16 is not my recommended machine anymore. I'm gonna keep using my wonderful XPS 15, but I've had people asking me, you know, what is the best laptop out there on the market right now? And I was reading about these ProArt Studio books and I asked B&H to loan me one to review. Um, and it's a bit of a sad day right now because I'm getting to the end of my review period and I'm gonna to have to wipe this and send it back. And I have been having a blast with this machine for the last couple of weeks. It runs about the same price. This is not a cheap machine. They make it in lower builds with less RAM, less smaller processors. This is the top of the line max build. I'm gonna put a link to this in this video's description. Uh, you can also run over to my ATS links page. You can click right here, but hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. And in the digital darkroom section, I'm gonna put this laptop front and center along with the accessories that I recommend. Again, that's all in this video's full description too. You just click the video's title and show more and you can go down to links. But it, this as is, is a $3,000 package. It comes with a nice little backpack and this rechargeable stylus. The screen is touch capable, pressure sensitive. It's got a plethora of ports. Uh, you know, if, if you look at the outside of this, it's beautifully machined metal. Uh, the screen folds all the way around flat for working in a, in a group. The screen is again pressure sensitive. You're working in Photoshop. You can use it sort of like a Wacom Cintiq screen. It's not quite as nice as a Wacom tablet with the pressure sensitivity. Um, it's got this fantastic click wheel on the keyboard that you can push and click and spin and it's set up by default to work in different apps or in the system as general and that's all customizable. I'll show you that when I run through and show you how this machine does some work uh, rendering panoramas and working in multiple 4K video streams. It's, it's a powerhouse. It's got two full-sized USB-A 3.2 10 gigabit per second ports on it, a full-size SD card slot. 
It's got really nice cooling vents. This left side has the SD card slot, a headphone jack, traditional headphone jack, USB-A at 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits per second, so a gigabyte a second. Um, big, nice sculpted metal exhaust ports out the side and set it down the bottom into your lap while you're working. The back has its traditional power adapter port, a one gigabit ethernet port, an HDMI, full-sized HDMI out port. You don't have to have a dongle or anything for that. More exhaust ports straight out the back. And then the right side has two Thunderbolt 4 ports at 40 gigabits per second. Another USB-A 10 gigabit per second super speed port, a lock, Kensington lock port, and then another exhaust port out the right side. You can pop the bottom of this open. Again, really nice you know, base with beautiful feet, rubber feet to get it stuck nice. Um, got a bunch of screws. You can pop that apart. There are two NVMe hard drive headers on the motherboard of this machine. Uh, easy to throw in a second ultra fast hard drive if you want. The RAM is not soldered in, it's user adjustable. As this one is spec, I've got it with a 24 core i9 processor, the latest generation, 64 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA RTX 3000 eight gigabyte uh, RAM video, dedicated video processor. It's one of the reasons why I love the, the, the Windows machine too, is that for, with video editing, NVIDIA is wonderful. Um, it's just been, a really nice, really nice powerhouse of a machine. And I love the touchscreen capability. It has a wonderful webcam. Uh, it's a 1080 infrared webcam. In the dark, I open this and it instantly logs in from facial recognition. Um, the, the keyboard feels really nice. It's got a full number pad built into the keyboard. Uh, the OLED touch display it calibrates really nicely. It displays 99% of Adobe RGB. It gets bright and beautiful, but it's also really nice when it's dimmed. This is a fantastic machine, you know. What, what are a couple of the down points about it? Uh, well, the one thing that I find is kind of a major down point about it, it's not that big a deal, but that it's stock charger is pretty old school. It's a big brick of a charger, traditional sort of port that plugs into the back of the machine. You know, it's, it's a chunk to lug around, but in some testing, I found that my Minix charger, the international travel charger, the larger one that does a hundred and, uh, it does 130 watt, I think, or 150 watt, which one is it? I can tell you. 140 watt max output. This plugged in with one of my uh, Magtame magnetic cables. If you didn't see that video, click right here. Along with this neat little right angle uh, magnetic USB adapter, which kind of turns it into a Magtame port. Thing powers it fine. It keeps up even doing video editing. If I just plug it into one of the two Thunderbolt ports on the side and plug this into the wall, this thing essentially replaces that big brick if you want to take something smaller on the road. And it has two additional uh, USB-C charging ports. So you can use it to charge your phone and say your Nikon camera or whatever camera has USB-C power delivery capable charging. So that's kind of a nice uh, replacement for this big old bird's nest of a traditional charging block, which I would just leave in the studio and take this on the road with me. Uh, it's the only other downside to this machine is that it's a little bit bigger and bulkier by design. You know, you get all those amazing ports and uh, you don't have to carry a bunch of dongles and cable adapters with you. Uh, but it's a little bigger and heavier than my XPS 15. Um, you know, it definitely takes a little more room in the bag. It weighs in at five pounds, six and a half ounces on my postal scale, as opposed to four pounds, nine ounces. Not that significant. And critically, you know, it still fits in all of the computer bags I like to carry my other laptop in. Still fits nicely into the laptop sleeve of my um, Gregory little carry-on backpack that I generally carry alongside my camera bag on the plane. What's its performance like? Well, actually, let me just walk you through and show you some photo and video editing amazingness out of this machine.
All right, so I thought I'd just give you a little kind of demo of how smooth it is to operate this machine and some of the cool features in it. Um, you know, from the touch wheel to the really nice built-in webcam and audio, you can see, you know, that this webcam's better than any laptop I've been using lately. Um, it's nice and clear 4K. The audio is quite good through the mic and it has beautiful built-in sound from the speakers too. And I just love the click wheel. You touch that click wheel, you push it down and you've got by default system brightness and volume. You click on one of those and the wheel just controls, you know, the volume, say you were watching a movie or the brightness. Really, really handy. Um, I found that this machine didn't come with a whole bunch of bloatware. There were some things I got rid of. You know, I'm never a big fan of having uh, Norton antivirus installed. I got rid of that right away. It was easy to uninstall. I find Windows Defender more than adequate. There are a couple of, of nice uh, apps that come with it just for customization and control of this really high-powered PC and its beautiful OLED touch display, as well as the control panel. One of them is this Asus Dial control panel. Um, and this is where you can open this up and customize what that click wheel does that's right next to the big beautiful trackpad. Uh, you can do it system wide or you can add different app controls and preferences and add different functions in. You can see we got system volume and brightness. You can move those around, add new ones. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, the other one is this um, ProArt Creator Hub. And that lets you do a whole bunch of things from color calibration to optimizing different apps and how much RAM and, and power they're able to take up and CPU processing and prioritize your app's power and, and, and uh, CPU usage. But it also lets you control the fan profiles of the machine. And I find I run it 99% of the time in performance mode. Standard mode is dead silent. Performance mode, you know, it dynamically adjusts the fans to, to cool it for really high powered tasks like video editing. And I'll go in and I'll show you some Lightroom uh, editing and some, some, um, some uh, Adobe Premiere video editing power. This thing's a powerhouse. But you can also throw it into full speed mode and that just turns on the massive amount of cooling. You can feel air just blowing out of all of the vents. And I could see using this if you were going to render a bunch of videos and walk away for breakfast while that's happening, just to keep Turbo Boost moving as fast as possible if you're out on the road with your laptop and getting the max out of your processor. You can probably hear the fans over my lav mic. Yeah. This machine's normally pretty darn dead silent, but you throw it in full speed mode and it becomes even more of a creative powerhouse. Although, like I said, it's fast enough I haven't really felt the need. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Lightroom Classic uh, from my, my um, T7 catalog drive, which I moved between my desktop and my laptop. And it should pull up Lightroom right where I was on my Mac Studio on, on the desk back behind me. Yep, I'm in my quick collection here and it's adjusted, it's got some images I threw in. And I'm everything here is off my, um, my network attached storage drive. Um, photography folder. So that's shared between uh, both my, my laptop and my desktop over 10 gigabit ethernet. So that's running into this machine via Thunderbolt from my Thunderbolt Pro Dock, my OWC Thunderbolt Pro Dock. Uh, and what I thought I'd show you in here is, in, you know, one of the cool things I'll talk about in Lightroom too, is the touchscreen capability. I can pinch to make my my uh, thumbnails smaller, select images. I can scroll by just moving my finger across the screen. It's super cool. But making those a little bit smaller, I'm gonna select all of these panorama images. And if we go in and we look at one of these, pull up information with the I key. I shot these all with the Nikon Z7 full resolution. They're raw files. Uh, and coming back to the grid. So we're gonna do, let's see, there's, uh, I think, are that 14, 14, 46 megapixel files in this multi-row panorama. I actually want to pull up a, a little stopwatch app that I have uh, down here in my taskbar. And I'll use Windows Awesome sort of scaling and just set up Lightroom so it's right next to the stopwatch. And I'll go ahead and reset that stop clock. I was testing some other stuff on this computer. And, and I'll go ahead, I'll click start on it so that you can see how long this takes. It's gonna take a little bit of time. We're gonna pull up merge to panorama. Um, and I can speed this up and you'll see the clock speed up too. But it's gonna open up that panorama preview window uh, so that we can merge these guys all into one 
big, probably 150 megapixel-ish image. Oh, there we go. Not too bad, 55 seconds. Um, you know, I, I think my Mac Studio probably would have done that a little bit quicker, but for a laptop, that's pretty much blazing. Um, you know, one thing I'll do, I'll do a little content aware fill just to fill in these edges since they aren't of the most important stuff and I don't want to warp it. Um, and cropping would lose some pixels. I'm going to go ahead and click that, see how long that takes. I don't think I need to start the clock. I think it's pretty, wow, that's fast, right? Spherical is generally the right projection. It sure looks clean to me, nice straight edges. Um, Let's reset, let's restart this clock and see how long it takes to merge these 14 46 megapixel Z7 files into one big pano. There we go. All right, so we're creating the pano. I'll speed this up, you can watch the clock and me and we'll come back to it when it's done. Ooh, looks like it's about done here. Pulling that guy up. Ooh, all right. Let's just stop this guy and bring our uh, Lightroom window back to full screen. Open the tabs. Holy cow. Let's zoom in a little bit. It might take just a minute to render this big boy at full resolution, but that was awesome. What was that? Uh, less than two minutes for a really big pano merger. That's pretty nutty performance. And there we go. It rendered the full 100% preview. Wow. Huh, I need to start editing this guy a little bit to print, get rid of that tripod leg. That That is pretty awesome. All right, so I th think that shows you, you know, this thing has performance capabilities that are pretty darn astounding. All right. For those of you who do any video editing, let's talk uh, Adobe Premiere really quick. Um, oh, I didn't show you. You know, oh shoot, I'll restart that really quick. The, it's really neat when you're in Lightroom, they have the click wheel dialed for all these different Adobe apps that you might use. And, and so, you know, let's say, let's gotta pull this thing up. We were gonna go in and do some develop work uh, on this image. If I go ahead and click on develop, and then I hit the click wheel, You'll see we got contrast, we got exposure, blacks, white, shadows, highlights, saturation, color temperature. All those are selectable on the click wheel. You know, pretty good choices for what you might want to use that for instead of, instead of dialing in sliders. Um, I would say that's pretty awesome. All right, so let's take a look at Adobe Premiere. Here we go. And I have a little test project I created that essentially combines four different 4K streams. Um, and it's not rendered. You can see that yellow line shows that this is all just sort of thrown together. We could move it around just to kind of prove that point, set it up slightly differently. Um, and so none of this is rendered. These are all layered on top of each other. You'll see them start coming in. They're few different 4K drone videos as well as a, a 4K Z9 or, or ZF uh, video. But if I go ahead and play that, you'll watch it render these four 4K streams together live. Um, and I can go ahead and make that full screen so that we're previewing it. There's the Z9 is the, the Scottish cows and we got three different drone videos, this old castle, the old man of store, Talisker Bay at sunset. I mean, that's just a little wind noise layered in. Just pretty darned incredible. And if I hit the click wheel, you see I've got several different functions that are just built in for video editors from adjusting the height of the visible audio tracks to the zooming in on the timeline as I'm working on it to timeline access uh, to time access adjustment. And you could add other functions in that you might want while video editing. But I think they've done a pretty nice job giving us exactly what might we might want. When you combine that with the touch screen capability of this thing and just how beautiful its OLED display is, the the power of this thing when I'm out on the road would be pretty darn amazing. I can't think of a laptop being made today that I would more highly recommend working with. All right, so I think you can see why 
I'm sad to be boxing this up and sending it back to B&H. Huge thanks to B&H uh, for letting me test this and prove to myself that it's as great a machine as it as it looked like it was going to be on paper. It it is lovely. And you know, if anything were to happen to my trusty XPS 15 tomorrow, this is the machine I would plunk down money on buying. I'm sure this would last me multiple years and I'd be very, very happy with it. Um, the only accessories I think, the definitely I love using the MX Master uh, mouse, whether I'm on my Mac or my PC, I'm just not a big touchpad fan. I like the tactile feel of a mouse and all the gesture controls that come with it. And I, I think that this Minix uh, travel charger along with a good cable like this Magtam O cable and I love the USB 4 right angle MagSafe power adapter. I think that's just nice to save your computer if it gets bumped, particularly when you're on the road or an airplane or something like that. So those are accessories I'd strongly consider for it. Um, it it's just a fantastic machine. Again, links are at my HudsonHenry.com slash ATS links site in the digital darkroom section, also in this video's full description uh, to everything I've been talking about. It, it, it is really, really nice. You know, if you're on a budget and you're watching this thinking, you know, that's a, that's a steep price. Well, the XPS 15 that I bought several years ago was exactly the same price. It was three, it was actually maybe $3,200, a little bit more money customized through Dell. I happen to know that they're blowing these machines out, if you can still find one, um, in preparation for, you know, selling the XPS 16 that has way more limited functionality and the welded on, you know, the soldered RAM to the motherboard, the less functional keyboard, less ports, only one hard drive slot, just a significant step down in my mind. But if you can still find one of the XPS 15s with the i9 processor at a steep deal, it's a powerhouse of a machine too and smaller and lighter. Um, I don't think it's quite as efficient at keeping itself cool under heavy load as this machine. It's not built for quite uh, the creative productivity that this machine is. This is a true world-class laptop. I love it and I'll be sad to send it back. All right, everybody, so thanks so much for watching. You know, if you wanna to get together with Rick and I and the gang for office hours, big free group photography get together, sign up for that over at HudsonHenry.com. Leave us a question. Uh, we'll be taking those and showing some images from our latest workshops and having a good, good time with the whole gang talking photography on a Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. soon. So sign up for that, uh, leave your question. I hope everybody's out there staying creative, staying safe. We'll see you next week.